two, one. Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on Wednesday the 10th of June. <clears throat> o Lord, open our lips. And our and our o Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have found a stronghold against your foes that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them? Mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You give them dominion over the work of your hands and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was, it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and now, shall be forever. Be forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. 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 The psalm appointed is 119, beginning at the first verse. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. Blessed are those whose way is pure, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies and seek him with their whole heart. Those who do no wickedness, but walk in his ways. You, O Lord, have charged that we should diligently keep your commandments. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame because I have regard for all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart when I've learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. How shall young people cleanse their way to keep themselves according to your word? With my whole heart have I sought you. Let me not go astray from your commandments. Your words have I hidden within my heart that I should not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. O teach me your statutes. With my lips have I been telling of all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your testimonies than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and contemplate your ways. My delight shall be in your statutes and I will not forget your word. <clears throat> oh, do good to your servant that I might live and so shall I keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger upon earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with fervent longing for your judgments. You have rebuked the arrogant and cursed are those who stray from your commandments. Turn from me shame and rebuke, for I have kept your testimonies. Rules, rulers also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statutes. For your testimonies are my delight. They are my faithful counsellors. My soul cleaves to the dust. Oh, give me life according to your word. I have acknowledged my ways and you have answered me. 
O oh, teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your commandments, and so shall I meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away in tears of sorrow. Raise me up, according to your word. Take from me the way of falsehood. Be gracious to me through your law. I have chosen the way of truth, and your judgments have I laid before me. I hold fast to your testimonies. O oh Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments when you have set my heart at liberty. Teach me, O oh Lord, the way of your statutes. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and shall be forever. Amen. First reading is from chapter eight, and as yesterday we warned that there's some violence in this reading. Then the Lord said to Joshua, "Do not, do not fear or be dismayed. Take all the fighting men with you and go up now to see I. See, I've handed over to you the king of I with his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to I and its." king as you did to Jericho and its king. Only its spoil and its livestock you may take as booty for yourselves. Set an ambush against the city <coughs> behind it. So Joshua and all the fighting men set out to go up against I. Joshua chose 30,000 warriors and sent them out by night to command you to lie an ambush against the city behind it. Do not go very far from the city. But all of you stay alert. I and all the people who are with me will approach the city. When they come out against us, as before, we shall flee from them. They will come out after us until we've drawn them away from the city. They will say, they are fleeing from us, as before. While we flee from them, you shall rise up from the ambush and seize the city. For the Lord your God will give it into your hands. And when you've taken the city, you shall set the city on fire, doing as the Lord has ordered. See, I have commanded you. So Joshua sent them out, and they went to the place of ambush, and lay between Bethel and Ai, to the west of Ai. But Joshua <clears throat> spent that night in the camp. In the morning, <clears throat> Joshua rose early and mustered the people, and went up, and the elders of Israel, before the people to I. <clears throat> All the fighting men who were with him went up and drew near before the city and camped on the north side of I, with a ravine between them and I. Taking about 5,000 men, he set them in ambush between Bethel and I, to the west of the city. So they stationed the forces, the main encampment that was north of the city and its rear guard west of the city. But Joshua spent that night in the valley. When the king of Ai saw this, he and all his people, the inhabitants of the city, hurried out early in the morning to the meeting place facing the Arabah to meet Israel in battle. But he didn't know there was an ambush against him behind the city. And Joshua and Israel made a pretense of being beaten before him and fled in the direction of the wilderness. So all the people who were in the city were called together to pursue them. And as they pursued Joshua, they were drawn away from the city. There was not a man left in Ai or Bethel who did not go out after Israel. They left the city open and pursued Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the sword that is in your hand towards Ai, for I will give it into your hand. And Joshua stretched out the sword that was in his hand towards the city. As soon as he stretched out his hand, the troops in ambush rose quickly out of their place and rushed forward. They entered the city, took it, and at once set the city on fire. So when the men of Ai looked back, the smoke of the city was rising to the sky. They had no power to flee this way or that. For the people who fled to the wilderness turned back against the pursuers. When Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city and that the smoke of the city was rising, 
Then they turned back and struck down the men of Ai. And the others came out from the city against them. So they were surrounded by Israelites, some on one side and some on the other. And Israel struck them down until no one was left who survived or escaped. But the king of Ai was taken alive and brought to Joshua. When Israel had finished slaughtering all the inhabitants of Ai in the open wilderness where they pursued them, and all of them to the very last had fallen by the edge of the sword, all Israel returned to Ai, attacked it with the edge of the sword. The total of those who fell that day, both men and women, was 12,000, and all the people of Ai. Wow. Mm. For Joshua did not draw back his hand, with which he stretched out the sword, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the livestock and the spoil of that city Israel took as their booty, according to the word of the Lord that he had issued to Joshua. So Joshua earned Ai, and made it forever a heap of ruins, as it is to this day. And he hanged the king of Ai on a tree until evening. And at sunset, Joshua commanded, and they took his body down from the tree, threw it down at the entrance of the gate of the city, and raised over it a great heap of stones, which stands there to this day. Here ends the first reading. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but the water, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I have <coughs> and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will reach the Father. Reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 1. Jesus was praying <coughs> in a certain place, and after he'd finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we for ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me, the door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though we will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. 
Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Here ends the second reading. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, Lord you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. And afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father. And to the Son, the, Son and the, Holy Spirit. the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. Mm. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and, the Son, and, and to, the to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. as it was towards the beginning, is now, is now and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Let us pray. Father, we live before you this day. The meetings we will have, the conversations, the decisions that must be taken. We pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us in all we do and say. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayer. We pray for the church around the world. May we constantly be your light in troubled times. We pray for our bishops. And we think about those parishes whose finances have been badly damaged because of lockdown. Lord, we pray for wisdom for those making long-term decisions about how limited resources are used. Lord, in your mercy, hear. Hear our prayer. And we pray for our parish. Lord, we thank you for all that has been. We thank you for all that is now. And we pray for your guidance and that your Holy Spirit will be with us <coughs> step of the way as we look to the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. And we pray for all those who are sick in body, mind and spirit. Lord, we ask for your healing touch, that you will strengthen them, that they may endure. 
<laughs> and we ask that they will receive the help they need. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. <laughs> Father, we lift before you all the places where there is unrest. We ask that political leaders act justly as they deal with troubles in their countries, thinking about the good of all their people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, as the Black Lives Matter movement spreads, help us as individuals and churches to see where we may have sinned by not acting, by not speaking out, by not truly understanding. Lord, forgive us and help us to be agents of change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the ease of lockdown. We ask that consideration is given to all the issues. Grant wisdom to our PM and his government, to councils and civic leaders and police chiefs who must administer the new rules. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for all those who mourn. May they feel your loving arms wrapped round them. And we pray that the church might be a source of comfort and hope as they journey ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. And the collect for today. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.